couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lickin' Riffers. Welcome back to another awesome guitar lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. And in this one, I will teach you how you can take the three most common, most boring chord progressions and turn them into something completely new, completely fresh, and suited to your own style. I'll show you dozens of different ways to do just that. But before we start, I want to mention that this lesson is sponsored by Skillshare, which is reason for celebration. Because if you don't know what Skillshare is, it's Lick and Riff times 10,000. It's an online learning platform chock full of quality video courses on anything. And when I say anything, I do mean anything from photography to video editing, to marketing, to psychology, to music, to drawing, to painting, anything. Okay, just go to Skillshare, click the link in the description. The first 500 people to click the link in the description will get two full months of premium membership. You know what that means, don't you? full access to all the courses. And that's just uncanny because last time Skillshare did a sponsorship here on Lick and Riff, I got addicted. I spent two whole weeks on the app binge watching courses on anything from photography to video editing to musical courses and music production courses. And I even watched courses on things I'm not good at like drawing. I have no drawing skills, but I still watch the courses because the courses are so much fun to watch. So just go there and get addicted. It's just amazing that they're giving you two months for free access to all the courses. So the first 500 to click the link in the description will get just that two months access. Okay. So, um, the chord progressions, let's start the lesson. The three chord progressions I'm talking about are chord progressions you've heard and played billions of times, okay, on the radio, background music, whatever. And I'm talking about the first one is the basic one, A minor, G and F. Okay? Or in its Sultans of Swing version, D minor, um, C and B flat. Okay? It's the same progression. Um, we've all heard that countless times, okay? The second one is the canon in D progression, okay? You can play it in D, you can play it in C. In D it would be D, A, B minor, F sharp minor, G, okay? And you can finish it on D, A, okay, like in the canon, or G and then A and D. Okay, some songs have that as the ending. If we play it on C, you've heard that too. It's C, G, A minor, E minor, F. And again, you can play C, G, okay, or G, C. Okay? So I'll show you what you can do with that. The third progression is the, um, is, is the four chord song. It's, um, it's an offshoot of the canon progression. It's C, G, A minor, and F. Okay. It's the four chord song. So what can you do with those stale progressions? You can do a lot. Okay. The first thing to do is to add embellishments, to add extensions to the chords. If we take the canon one, okay, by just opening the first string, you get extensions. Okay. We'll start slow and we'll complicate it as we go along. So if you open the first string on the D progression for the canon, you get D sus2, okay? If you open the second string on A as well, you get A sus2, okay? You can, uh, you can also add two on the E string, okay? And then you get uh, A sus2 add six. Um, but again, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Now on B minor, you can let go of the first string and then you get B minor at 11. You can also let go of the third string okay, and then you get this beautiful sound, which is actually E minor 7 at 9 over B. Okay, but we'll call it B minor add something, okay? just because I want to keep the, the B minor framework in mind, okay, the original chord. Then on F sharp minor, Okay, you can take the pinky off for F sharp minor seven, okay? But if you want a more beautiful F, my, uh, F sharp minor seven, you open the first string, but how can you do that with the bar? Okay, we're playing finger style here, so we'll do it like this. Okay, this is the sound that we're going for. It's the open E string, 
two on the second string, two on the third string, two on the sixth string. Okay? I'm gonna do it with these fingers too, okay? but I prefer this because um, this is an easier shape for the hand. You don't have to stretch the tendons. Okay? So F sharp minor seven. Okay, now on G, you can um, also open the E string, but add the three on the second string just for sound. Right? To get this. Yeah, because if you have open strings, sounds like an open string guitar. Okay, like, like this. So just add three on the second string. Okay? It's in the chord anyway. Okay? So again, by just opening the E string. Okay, so. Second string on the A chord. Right? And okay, that open ethereal B minor sound. If you just want to open the E string, that's also okay. Right? Just play around with it and see what you like. See the expression that you want to get out of it. We're not even talking rhythm yet. And then the F sharp minor seven and then now I forgot to mention that when the open uh, when the E string is open with a G chord it's G6 okay? and then you go back okay? to D sus2 and A sus2 so immediately you get a new expression out of it now if you add rhythm to it okay, again do it in your own style I'll just try to improvise something to show you how it sounds now you can add the missing notes on the E string you can add two on the E string to almost any chord here including G okay, now if you add two on the E string on G that would turn it into G major 7 okay, especially if you have that three on the second string as well okay it's a great sound so Remember A sus2 with two on the E string with the F sharp note. Okay, adding the six. Okay, you can do the whole chord, but why? Okay, right, so okay, you can pull off the two to zero on the A as well. sharp minor seven okay G major seven or G6 with the open E string okay go go I see you want to go okay and then again okay, and then the DNA again okay so that's one way to do it the other way to do it is to add sevens and minor sevens Okay, which we already did in um, in F sharp minor. Okay, we added uh, a minor seven. Okay, there. So let's try it with the rest. In D, it's major, so add the major seven. Okay, right? with two on the second string, so it's two 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 zero. Now from that, you can go to A six, which is the whole bar, but again, using the same sound sounds like a mistake okay. doesn't sound too musical because you barely changed anything so okay. now you can do okay. you can do a major seven okay um, in the original scale you'd want a seven because that's the dominant sound okay but that's a little bit too predictable Okay. Okay. A7. It's both predictable and too strong, in my opinion, for what I'm trying to show you. So, D major 7 can go to A major 7, which is 2 1 2 on the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th strength, with the A bass, of course. Or a bar on two with four on the E string, okay, with the open fifth string, of course. Okay, so okay, that gives it a little bit of jazziness, actually. So if you do the low one, and then 
you can do this. Okay? The open B minor, which is actually E minor add nine, E minor seven add nine. Okay, which is seven. Okay? So you can close the bar. And then you'd have a B minor seven. Okay, with the two on the third string. Okay, you can add five on the E string if you want. F sharp minor seven. Let's leave it at that. Um, if you add the D string in there as well, you get that sixth as well. If you like, doesn't interrupt, so you can add it. And then G, we already said that you can do the G major seven. Okay. Now I keep playing it as a mellow thing. Okay, but you can do it as a rhythmical thing. See, and I'm just thinking on the top of my mind. Okay, you can slide the chord. Okay, you can uh, start with the minor seven. You can slide into it. And then I got a Bee Gees kind of thing. You can either do that, okay, or bar the second fret for F sharp minor and play five on the second string as well. Okay, that gives you an interesting sound. Or you can bar using your little finger on five and five on strings one and two with the bar on two, which is again it's the same chord. But it fits the sound that I'm that I'm experimenting with. See? And then See? Completely different from the canon in D, right? Just because we added extensions. And now we can uglify it if you want, but this is not the purpose of this lesson. You can move other notes. Hey, okay, um, you, can, you can do this, yeah, you can do the flat five here, and also on A. Hey, okay, but that's just unnecessary. I want you to create good music, not intentionally sophisticated music, which just, which just goes to prove how good a musician you are. Okay, we want to enjoy the music together. Right, so this is the first progression. Now, if we do it on C, Okay, we let go of the first finger for the C major 7. Okay, on the second string. Now on G. Okay, we can open the first string again for that G6, but we can also add 2 on the third string for, this, for the add 9. Okay, I know that you're having trouble hearing the progression, but um, but bear with me here. Okay, you can stop the video and play it and see, but it's a good exercise to try and hear it if it's difficult for you. Okay, the key change. It's a good ear training exercise. Then for A minor, of course, open the third string for A minor 7. Okay. Now for E minor, you can add 3 and 3 on strings 1 and 2 for the minor 7. Or you can take that open B minor thing for the E minor 7 add 9. Okay, right? you can do the same thing. And uh, then you have F and G. So for F, you can do F major 7 by playing 0, 1, 2, 3 on strings 1 to 4. Okay? You can also open the third string there. Okay. For an even more beautiful chord. Now you can add an A bass to it. Okay. You can add a C sharp bass to it on the fifth string. But again, we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. So F 
Open the E string, open the third string if you want. You can hammer it on. Right? And then you have G again, so. Right? And you can play around with the two and zero on, on the third string. Okay, the, the add nine. So now let's play it, C. Okay, let's uh, Travis pick it. Take just a different rhythm to show you. Okay, the G at nine. Okay, and I'm playing with three and two on strings two and three because they're in the chord and I'm adding two so you can open the string. Okay, a minor seven. The minor seven adds a lot of color. track okay so I'll write the chord progression on the screen and I'll just play it so you can hear it to experiment with opening the first and second string but let's um, take a different approach oh. you see I'm opening both strings on F the first and third string You can add the embellishments later. You don't have to start with them. You can do C, C, C major 7. You can do G, 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 add 9. And so on and so forth. Now, it's the same thing, the same approach to the A minor G and F one. Okay? You can do a, the, the same approach would be A minor 7, G, add 9, or G, 6, or no, G major 7 wouldn't work here. You can do G7, but again, the 7th chord is too strong in my opinion in what I'm trying to show you here. It doesn't fit the atmosphere of leading the chords into one another because a 7th chord kind of takes all the attention to itself. So I want to avoid that. That's the predictable thing to do. So G sus2 or 6 uh, sus2, uh, add 9. The same note, the different chord. Um, and then on F, you can do the F major 7, the major 7 um, with the open third string. Okay, I'm not saying the name because it's a theoretically complicated chord because it is technically an F chord, but it's also this. So the one with the C sharp on the bass leading you back to C, it's a classical thing. So that's why I'm avoiding naming this chord. Chord names don't matter anyway. Um, it's all in the sound. If you can make the sound work, the chord works. Then you have G again and back to A minor. So what you can do here is first of all, turn the A minor into A major, okay? After a couple of rounds. The, the A major thing. You can play A major instead of A minor and then go back. Okay? And I'm using the open E string after the G chord. Always the G6 sound. See, it works. Completely refreshes the ear. Okay? And um, you can try to add the major seven, but again, that's, that's taking it out of the scale. Um, so you can change the main minor chord into A there, 
just for the purposes of um, of enriching the sound and then going back to the minor. Okay, but what you can do uh, with the F chord is something that I saved for last, which is F minor. Okay, you can do F minor as well. Why? Because um, F minor is the chord in the C minor scale. And A minor and C major are relative scales, relative chords. Uh, they have the same notes in the scale. Okay? And if you turn the F into F minor, you're borrowing from the minor equivalent of the C major scale, which is related to the A minor scale. If you didn't get any of that, doesn't matter. All that matters is that F minor works. Okay, so... F minor also works in the canon thing. You see? F, F minor, C. Now, in A minor, G, and F, you can do F minor as well, if you like. Okay? Okay? Especially if you're doing A minor 7. Okay, because that's, that you get, okay, you get a chromatic line there. F, F minor, and then A minor, 7. Okay, so um, that's kind of how you refresh it. Now, before you go practice this, I want to show you one last thing, how you can completely turn this into something completely different by adding more extensions. You know, you may not like how this sounds, right? But for example, in, in the canon, you can, well, you can do the D. Then you can do the A sus2. And then on G, uh, we're, we're not on G yet, um, sorry. Then you have B minor. And you can do, you can do B minor, uh, Nine, okay, which is um, you take an A chord and you take the finger from the fourth string to the fifth string on two, and then with the open E string you get B minor nine and eleven, okay, okay. So if you like that sound, great. So, ah, sorry, again. Hey, I'm confusing myself here. Great. See? And then you can go with this finger to the F sharp bass. And then you get the F sharp minor 7. So you see, you can find more connections. Okay, now on G, you can do G minor. Again, it's the same as the F minor in the A minor key. We're in D, so we have G, so we're borrowing from the D minor scale, we get D, we get G minor. So it's the same fingering as the F sharp minor, seven, up one fret. And if you have the open E string, you get G minor, six, okay? And you can use this finger to do a lick with two on the E string. So now I'll show you how that works, and then you go practice it. You can also you can always use the original chords. You don't have to add embellishments to everything. Just adding one or two would would completely refresh everything. Okay, and you can 
do D9 if you want instead of D, okay, which is uh, 5 5 4 5 on strings 2 to 5. So, okay, and then you can do uh, mm, this. Okay, you can do A at 11, which is the A bass, and you have three on the second string, six on the third, and five on the fourth. I know I said I'm gonna stop, but I'm having fun, so you can too with these chords. Right? And then, this ties very, very well into the E minor add nine, E minor seven add nine, which is the B minor chord that we're playing. Actually prefer the D. Okay, now you can also play the E, the E uh, string on the A at eleven. Okay, and that can create a great ending. So um, you go practice this, and don't forget, click the link in the description right now. The first five hundred people can grab two months for free on Skillshare and enjoy the plethora of video courses on there. So uh, thank you very, very much for watching and I'll see you on the next lesson. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? Bye for now, enjoy.